Has anybody else heard of Free RPA? Anyone using it? Okay. Cool. Using it a lot for everything, or just a little bit? Okay. Cool. So, um, if you haven't heard of Free RPA, it is um, basically a collection of open source components which provides a strong centralized um, identity management system. Um, it's built from um, like I say, some really strong open source components such as the 389 directory server, um, MIT Kerberos, um, Bind9, and it also supports dynamic DNS, um, the dog tag SSL server, um, and the SSSD service. It provides a centralized administration for identity and authentication, as I said, and it can help you um, provide a single sign-on across many different applications and systems as well. Um, it helps you centralize your passwords and your um, SSH authorized keys and um, Kerberos tickets. It enables you to set up um, quite detailed policies, so who can do what and where, um, with regards to things like sudo, SE Linux user maps, um, AutoFS as well, and it can also help you enforce a password policy. Um, and one of the really cool features, which I haven't tried yet, uh, is that it allows you to set up um, trust with third-party systems as well, so that could be Active Directory, or it could be other free IPA systems. And you can, for example, add a remote user into a local group, so when you give access to a service to a group, that can also include somebody authenticating as a um, remote user from another free IPA um, domain. So um, what's special about free IPA? So the people who, um, who work at the free IPA project have put a lot of work into making it simple to set up a strong centralized identity management system. So by that I mean it's easy to install the server components and it's easy to automate the client deployments as well. Um, they've also provided a good selection of um, management interfaces, so um, they give you a CLI tool, um, which you can add users and groups and manage policies. They give you uh, um, a web UI as well, and they have XML and um, JSON RPC APIs and a Python SDK. One of the other great features, if you open it into production, is um, it gives you master-master replication. Just there. Yes, that's right. So it uses um, 389 DS. Yeah. And obviously that enables you to scale up in terms of the amount of um, traffic you're actually taking as a system and then um, provide redundancy as well. So I'm going to take you through just how easy it is to um, get off the ground, hence couch to free IPA. So this is about preparing the free IPA server. So first of all, you need to get yourself a sane network configuration. You need to add yourself some firewall rules. I don't know if you can read those, but um, you need to, you're a DNS server, so you're going to need to accept DNS requests. Um, you're going to be a HTTP and HTTPS server for the web UI. Um, you're going to be a um, Kerberos um, ticket server as well. You're going to offer an NTP service to your clients, because obviously Kerberos really depends on your machines being closely synced. I think it's five minutes. Kerberos works within a, a five minute window. Um, also, it, it offers a, a native LDAP service as well, so if you've got other applications that talk to LDAP directly, you can open that port up and let your applications use the built-in LDAP service. Um, and the dog tag server, which I'm not going to go into too much detail of. Go on. Sorry, sir. I haven't seen that in the documentation. Um, but I can find out for you. Um, so a dog tag server is an SSL certificate management point, a centralized management point for SSL certificates. So once you've got your firewall set up, um, again a little bit more um, setting up your network so you need to make make sure that you've got a static network set up because you don't want 
a really important server like this getting rebooted and ending up on a new IP somewhere else. Um, and um, you're also going to want some off-the-box um, DNS as well, but presumably you've already got that. Um, so now the IPS server itself. So it really is as simple as that first line to get the packages in, and that will actually bring in 205 packages currently. Um, so this has come. I've taken these steps from the um, the documentation. So they've given you a set of steps to follow to prepare your machine before you actually put the packages in, in and configure the server. And um, I haven't tried running this process without doing this step, um, but it is a suggested step in the documentation. Um, that is me not editing it, so I've pasted this out from oh, one of our lab guides, I and I, I've forgotten to... Myself. Yeah, so this yes. would be your local recursive DNS service. Sorry, I, I've pasted this out of a lab guide, and I've gone through, and I've manually edited IPs, so that's just a hangover. Yeah. I was just going to say that basically all that step is doing is, at the moment, you, must, you don't have DNS service on your local machine, so yeah. basically all you're doing is taking all of your uh, main local machines slave to your actual DNS server. That's right. So we've made sure we've not got any DHCP running. So if you were getting your DNS via DHCP, then obviously if you reboot now, you're not going to have any um, DNS service. So. I guess that's just there to make sure that the box is, you know, functioning well on the network, which enables you to actually start to install the service. So um, you run that first command, and that currently pulls in 205 packages. Um, fortunately, they all come from the standard CentOS repos. You don't need to enable any special um, repos at all. Yes. So if you've got your own mirror of the CentOS repos, Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, that, that's probably a very clever thing to do, especially if you're in production and you're deploying. Yeah. Um, now, having said that, you're probably only going to install two or three free RPA servers. Um, but, but yeah, obviously, it's good practice if you're installing a lot of machines to have your local mirrors. So once you've got your packages in, um, you need to actually set up your um, free RPA server. So you're going to give it um, some passes. So one is for the um, an admin user, which it's going to set up on the machine. And another one is for um, machine registration, client registration. You're going to set up a Kerberos realm. You're going to set the host name of the RPA server itself. You're going to set up a zone. So this will actually set up a, a DNS zone. The free IPA um, group of services includes bind, so this will actually set up a so1.lab zone within that system. And um, you can also provide a DNS forwarder, so the local DNS service will provide um, the local zone um, with its own information, and it will also recurse for um, external zones as well. And that's it. Once you run that command, it will go away and it will take around five minutes to configure all the different components and it spits out lots of useful information which I don't have to hand but it tells you all of the steps that it's done and you can see that they've actually done a huge amount of work to make the setup easy and from that point you can log into a control panel and you've got a centralized um, system for managing all of your users so um, we can do a simple test so we can log into the server um, we can um, authenticate ourselves to Kerberos locally and from that point we can use um, the the free IPA um, command line tool which is just IPA and for example we can find our local admin user which was set up during the installation process. Um, so from that point we're ready to enroll our first client. So Again, on the client, you want to have a sane networking setup. So you may want to follow the same steps we did for the server, but um, then you may want to have your clients using DHCP. So you need to make it, make sure that your network is setting up machines in a sane manner, or else things might not go too well. Um, so 
the only package you need to install is IPA client. That will pull in a few dependencies. I think that's about 40 um, packages at the moment, but that will be mainly things like the um, the um, LDAP libraries and the Kerberos client and, and other things like that. Um, once those packages are installed, you can then um, enroll yourself to the um, free IPA server. Obviously, this means we're actually putting the password in there. There are other strategies to do this, but for simplicity, this is one way that works really well. Um, this is quite useful. It turns on the PAM Homedir creation for you as well, so that, that can be quite useful, especially if you're not using auto mount. If you're using auto mount, you might not want to do that. Um, and that's it, except for sudo, which you currently need to set up out of band because they haven't fully integrated the um, client side of the sudo setup. So to do that, um, you just need to edit some files. So you need to configure LDAP lookups for sudo. And you need to add this for, um, for one of the components in the system, but you're not actually running a NIS domain. This is a kind of dummy configuration you have to do to trick something else into working properly. Um, and you, because it, it, it's not part of the um, kind of standard system, you have to actually set up an out of band look up to the LDAP server to fetch the sudo as policy. So you need to put this configuration into this file. And from that point, and this is all on the client. That's right. So when you enroll the client at this step, the, and I'll show you this, where I'm going to go into the administration panel. It will actually set up a um, server certificate and transfer it, and that's where it puts it. So this is what enables you to get a secure connection to LDAP. Sorry? <laughs> no explicit involvement. So um, that's pretty much the end of our slides. Um, yes, you don't have to set up a password. If you, I mean, you probably would want to. So that would be fine for, say, SSH connections. Yeah. Um, but if you wanted to authenticate to a service that didn't support either, you know, um, a PKI based or. Yeah. You might have an issue of users. You want them to use SSH keys as your passwords. Mm -hmm. So is it still possible to create users without being passed SSH keys? Yes. So I'll show you. I'll, I'll go in, hopefully, I'll show you in the, uh, in the UI now, and hopefully that'll answer your question for you. So, um, what I'm going to do now is I already have a free RPA server set up. So, I, that takes five or ten minutes. So, I'm not going to bore you with lots of scrolling. You'll just kind of have to trust that that part works. What I am going to do is launch a client, show you the unattended um, enrollment process. I'm going to create a user. I'm going to add a, a SSH authorized uh, key for that user. Then I'm going to log in to my newly created client. And um, I'm going to sudo su to root to show that all of this hangs together. And obviously, there's a lot more um, functionality in this. I'm literally just showing you the basics of getting off the ground with free IPA. So, first of all, what I'm going to do is launch an instance because that will take. Bear with me. Okay, let's have another go. 
So we're going to launch a CentOS image. So this is just a, a minimal um, image. We'll call it Demo Dojo. Now, what, I, what I've got here is a, um, a kind of user data script which you can provide to OpenStack to do the post setup configuration of the machine. So you can see in here, um, I have, I'm setting up the network, I'm installing the IPA client, then I'm going to enroll it. Then I'm going to enable the authorized keys lookup, which I didn't actually have on the earlier slide. I forgot to add that. Then I'm going to set up the LDAP lookups for sudo. And that's it. Okay, so we've got our instance coming up. Whilst this is going, has anyone got any questions? What's the matter question is an observation. If you're going to use passwords on the command line, you should just do your shell history and meet the art Also a good point. If you don't specify the password on the command line, does it prompt you to enter? It will prompt you, yes. So you need you will need to have a password stored or, or input somewhere. You obviously you can't have an unattended process. You will need to authenticate. Actually it is possible to pre-create the um, server in free IPA um, but I haven't investigated that too much I believe there is a way to create it in advance but if you if you enroll it from the client itself it will automatically set up everything on the server end for you so, so um, that's why that's uh, yeah. So users can update their own passwords in band, so just using the password command, or they can actually log into the free IPA um, itself. And actually, I can show you that. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, in there, you have role based access controls. So, as a normal user, you can assign the role of user can change own password, and from that point, they will be able to log in and have that as a, a feature available to them within the um, the UI itself. Okay, so this is installing the um, IPA client packages. No, not that I've seen. Forty-five packages is better than watching two hundred and five packages going in. <laughs> Sorry, just why, why do you need the some for loops? Sorry. Why why are there some for loops? Um. Well, there, there was a package dependency. I'm not exactly sure what. So, yep, so you can see it's, <laughs> so you can see it's successfully retrieved um, the CA set, it's enrolled in the realm, and it's configured various things. It's also set up its dynamic DNS record here. Now, if this guest were to reboot and get a new IP address, it would then go and re um, change its DNS record. Um, 
Okay, so there are a few steps there. It's set up the SSH host keys and it actually put those into DNS as well for, well, they put the fingerprints into DNS. Um, and then it's booted up. So, what I'll do is add a user. I think my session has timed out. Yeah. Bear with me. Got it all set up and then. Yeah, that's the one. So we'll add a user. So here's your user. Here you can add a public key. So I've got one here. And we can also give it a sudo role. So I've just got a very simple sudo role setup called admins, which allows it to um, switch um, to call any command on any host from anywhere. So it's a very simple sudo setup. Okay. So we should now be able to log into that server. So you can see that it's set up our home directory on the way in. The DNS was all set up correctly. Um, obviously this is not a local user, I'm not doing any tricks here. That has actually come from FreeIPA. And and the first time you use your password, it will ask you to reset it. There we go. So it's all worked. <laughs> cool. So what I will do, I'll leave this up here. If anyone wants to come and have a poke around and have a look around this interface, I mean, it is absolutely huge, the amount of functionality that's in here. I couldn't even you know, begin to do it justice. But if anyone wants to come and have a look around this and look at the features that are in it, then I'll be here and I'll leave my laptop available. Um, so Radius can talk to LDAP, so you can create that linkage. Yeah. Uh, Replicas and save, I need two, three servers. Yeah. Uh, so does the application by default come with the package or we need to do Yes. Um, there is. So how to add another node in the same? Okay, so there is another. So you saw the IPA server install, and you saw the IPA client install. There is also IPA. Uh, 
replica, replica install. And it uses similar things, but you point it at an existing FreeRPA server, you authenticate, and it just joins. So it's just as easy as a, another server or client setup. Okay. One sec. The replication part, does it work? Is it the master master replication and it goes both ways? Yes. Okay, so just like regular LF. Yeah. So we can put it behind uh, HF proxy. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And it's quite clever as well. It does, the system has, um, as long as you are using a, uh, the free RPA server as your DNS resolver, you can automatically detect um, the domain that you're going to join as well. So when you enroll a client, it can look to the network and automatically um, find the details. So I'll just show you this in here. So you can see it can actually look at the Kerberos domain. And what it will do when you add replicas, you'll get more um, more of these records. So you'll actually get a list of all of your um, available servers. That's right, yeah. So it's not, it's, it's just pretend, no. no. <laughs> so can I join a, a Mac OS X client to a, yes. And I can join a Windows to it. I can join most operating systems to it. They might be a little bit more fiddly than IPA client install, but I, but I can absolutely join that, yeah. I just wondered if there's any facility to integrate other PAM modules into the authentication backend. Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's, I mean, fundamentally open source software. I mean, there would be nothing to stop you maybe adding more configuration steps to your setup. So doing integration work of your own or actually getting involved with the project itself and helping to expand it with things that you would like to see in there. Mm -hmm. With the exception of SSH keys, as discussed, uh, are there any alternatives to simple username password based authentication for the user to actually authenticate? Particularly anything one time, oath, YubiKey? I haven't investigated that, so I'm probably not. I probably Thanks. don't have your answer. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thank you. This because you know, as much as we like the people online, uh, <laughs> I'm going to get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> um.